Main House. Have executed authority. Bravo Six. Going dark. So SEAL Team 6 bust in the house and just shoot to kill. The grandma got unloaded on, Shorty got dropped off, and they just started dumping mags in Hero. Apparently bro did not escape that 5 star wanted level. Ladies and gentlemen, today I'ma just be honest with y'all. Out of the three to four years I've been doing this shit, I have never seen someone or something like this. So I'm gonna go ahead and give you a disclaimer right now. Ladies and gentlemen, what you are about to witness is one of anime's deadliest serial killers. So be warned, a lot of bodies will drop in this video. A lot more than usual. So y'all are probably wondering, all right, CJ, who is this Could You acting like he the second coming of Satan. Well, you wouldn't be far off. Ladies and gentlemen, the robo finger banger himself, Hiro Shishigami. Now, how this will work, it'll technically be like a trial, but a lot more simpler. Because all we need with this is just a simple kill count. Because with all the victims you are about to see, this is going to be the only way to keep up with this man's actions. So I got my calculator. I hope you got yours too. Because without further ado, let's get this party started. All right, ladies and gentlemen. Now, to understand the killer of this investigation, we first must understand, well, who is this nigga? Ladies and gentlemen, meet Hiro Shishigami, 17-year-old high school student. Now, off the rip, you first look at him and you think, <laughs> this generic-ass anime nigga looking like a run-of-the-mill isekai protagonist. Ain't no way in hell bro could even hurt a fly. I mean, look at him. Bro's at his friend's house reading One Piece glazing the fuck out of Oda. Oh! My glorious king Oda, this chapter this week was amazing. But ladies and gentlemen, this man right here is a prime example of don't judge a book by its cover. So he's at his friend's house to check up on him because bro's been getting bullied lately. So he tells him, hey man, I know what to cheer you up. Come outside real quick. So he takes this man outside and bro says, you see them crows, my boy? Peep this. This man makes his hand a gun and goes, Bum, and straight up snipes the crow out of the air. Like, bro, that poor crow. Bro's just chilling, enjoying his day, and got sniped. I know Peter watching this just puking in a mouth right now. Bro's first victim was an innocent crow. So now I know you wondering, what the hell is going on, and what the hell is he? Well, ladies and gentlemen, this man right here is Cyborg. Oh, yeah! But Japanese. So this is where this gets wacky, so bear with me. So one night, this man ended up getting involved in a hit and run with some aliens. What? Yes, I'm not joking. Him and the old ass man who's the main character got ran over by a UFO. So the aliens obviously felt guilty. They was like, <laughs> so they ended up restoring them and basically making them terminators. But you see, this is not all he can do though. Next, they go to their local Best Buy to probably get scammed on an overpriced TV. But Hero said, hell no, nah, I ain't about to get scammed by these niggas. So bro puts his hand on the TV and switches the channel to uh something I cannot show. You know what? Play the jingle. And he put it on every single TV in the store. So this man is not just a Terminator. He is also a God tier hacker. And this right here is his best perk because he can go to any ATM and take out as much money as he wants. Oh boy, I tell you if I had this shit, you know what, let me stop, bro, let me stop. But anyways, this is where we start to see how psychotic Hero actually is. So after they leave the store, Hero tells his friend, yo, man, you want to see something really cool? So they go to the side of the street and this motherfucker becomes Mozart. This man starts conducting traffic and just making all the cars hit each other. Look at this. This is ridiculous. Look, Bo's even controlling truck. Boom. Straight up floored this car. And look at him just standing here admiring the chaotic art he just created. And they just walk away like it's nothing. And he's like, did you enjoy my chaotic masterpiece, my friend? Like, it was so bad. His best friend even started to question him. Bro was hoping that he don't try to kill him. But now, ladies and gentlemen, this is where the investigation really starts. So prepare yourself so later on that night this man is outside playing ring around the rosy by himself and lands on this house and says you're it so this man walks inside the house and has the audacity to say i'm home so then the lady turn around and look at him like um excuse me baby you in the wrong house the wrong house nah you in the wrong house oh lord have mercy he shoots this lady in the chest dog what the fuck 
But now nah, look at him, bro. He wasn't done. He goes over to her body and just starts shooting her body. Dumping holes in her. Huh, huh, huh. Like, bro, she is already dead. Stop. She ain't getting up. But you see, bro wasn't done yet. He hasn't got his high off. Bro is about to clear the whole house. Next, he goes to the bathroom and finds the dad bro, playing the with what? his son. So obviously, the dad's like, ah, who are you? Papa, who is that? Uh, honey bun? Uh, who, who the hell is this? Huh. Ah! Shut up, nigga. So bro tries to shield his kid, but Hero just shoots him in the back. So then the dad asks, where, where, where is my wife? Oh, she's just downstairs. Oh, thank God. With four holes in her back and one in her chest. <laughs> so the dad begs for Hero to spare his son. And this man coldly says with no emotion, nah, the kid dies too. So then he pulls the dad in the head and the kid... Yeah, that little nigga drowned in the tub. And look at this fucker. Bro said, oh, I feel alive. That's the high I needed. Oh, oh, but you thought he was done? Oh, no. Now we get to the most infamous part of this whole anime. So the daughter comes home and just sees her mom's lifeless body on the floor. So she bags up and this nigga's just standing right here. So bro says, take a seat. I want to see if you know ball. So he makes her sit down on these stairs, puts the gun right in front of her head and asks her, and I'm not joking, real dialogue. What kind of manga do you read? I beg your pardon. What? What? What, what? what kind of manga do you read? What, what, one piece of, of attack on tight. What piece? Oh, you know ball. Real quick though. Gun to the back of your head and they five one piece characters. Uh, Zoro. Uh-huh. L L Luffy? Bitch, who the fuck is that? Mispronouncing names and shit. I ain't gonna lie, you know who bro remind me of? The niggas that got the Smash Bros cuts that figures out a girl watches anime and then they starts giving them a whole ass examination quiz and they wonder why they get no hoes. So after bro quizzes her, he starts to rub up on her and starts to hit her with that psychotic nigga Riz and just cuts her hand open. So she starts screaming and running for her life. But sadly for her, her speed attribute was lacking. So bro booms her. And just like that, this motherfucker done murdered a whole family. Like, this is a different type of level of sick. Like, I know I've done multiple characters in the past, but this murdering a whole family of four in cold blood is wild. But we'll come back to the suburban family incidents in a minute. Because next, we need to move on to the high school bullies. So as we know from earlier on, Hero's best friend has been skipping school lately because he's been getting bullied. But Hero told him, don't worry about it, goody old pal. I'll deal with those bullies for you. So the next day at school, the bullies see that his friend Ando is back in class. So you already know they're ready to harass this nigga. So bully number one slams his hand on the table. And here he comes with his sorry ass roast. Hey, buddy, we haven't seen you at school lately but do you know who also hasn't been at school lately my mom <laughs> yeah laugh at the joke pussy so bro tries to grab him but hero ends up stopping him and everybody in the class is stunned they like oh nah little nigga playing with his life so bully number one looks at him and says wow you've got balls kid but do you know who's also got balls my mom but Hero was not fucking with Muscle Man. Bro grabs his wrist and starts crushing it. And look at him, he like, oh God, who is this strong ass nigga? So then Hero says, what's my name, nigga? <laughs> what's my motherfucking name, nigga? <laughs> now quit fucking with my bro, fuck nigga. Fuck out my face. So Hero ends up dealing with the bullies and they take the walk of shame. But do you think he was going to let them off of the hook that easily? Oh no. So at the end of the day, they go to the roof and Hero ends up spotting the bullies walking with the hoes. So he gives his friend some binoculars and says, watch this. And this man says the phrase four times. Ah, 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 ah. And Ando ends up spotting them. And them boys done got boom right in front of the hoes. I mean, what a shitty final hours for these dudes, bro. First, they get embarrassed in front of the whole class. Then they get sniped in broad daylight right in front of their hoes. Nah, not gonna lie, that is embarrassing. That might be one of the worst ways I've ever seen somebody go out. So obviously, the witness to this murder, his best friend, is officially on skates with bro now. Blood was like, to be honest with you, I can't fuck with you no more, my bro. So Hero was like, okay, just make sure you keep on going to school. And just like that, the high school bullies case comes to a close. But like I said earlier, we're not done with the suburban families incident. Because obviously, it states families, not just family. 
So while this man is walking home, he just stops for a second. And I'll be honest with you, I'm actually going to have to play this scene because you have to hear the audio to understand what happens. So roll the clip. Ah. Stop. As we clearly heard, this nigga just murdered a dog. Are we not done yet? Keep the clip rolling. This nigga just killed a mother, a grandpa, and a baby. Oh, oh lordy, lordy, lord. But bro wasn't done. While he's walking away, he sees these two kids running past him. And bro turns around, points his finger at him, and said in his head, Man, fuck them kids, bro. <laughs> Y'all already, ladies and gentlemen, it is now time for case three, the media massacre and the discord mods. Now, there are a couple plot points that we have to go over before we dive into this case. And there are two people who are very important to this case. And that is none other than his mama and his daddy. Now, Hero's parents are split. The mama is in the trenches. And the dad, that nigga living his best life. Bro got a whole different family, new wife, new kids, nice ass crib. This nigga at the to the top of my lifestyle. And you wanna know what makes this so much worse? This man's mama get diagnosed with cancer, bro. But wild shit, this man Hero ends up figuring out that he can cure all diseases. <laughs> Yes, this man has evolved again from Terminator to hacker to walking medkit. This man can literally cure anything from the 19 to Ebola. It don't matter, bro can fix it. Then after he cures his mom, bro starts robbing the ATMs again and moves around the hood. So life seems to be going great for Hero. Bro done moved his mama to a new crib and he's got a solid infinite money glitch going on. But all good things come to an end. So obviously the multiple suburban family murders he committed, yeah, that's national news now. And there's a massive manhunt going on looking for the killer, to which we know who that already is. And while he's watching the news with his mom, peep what she says right here. Oh Lord have mercy, this is terrible. I'd like to meet the parents that would raise such a child. <laughs> Ma'am, I have some terrible news for you. You're going to jail. You're going, going to jail. jail. So the next day, they get a knock on the door, and y'all already know who it is. FBI, open up! So this man is surrounded, and they ain't playing no games with this nigga. They jumping his ass right in front of his mama. They hitting him with that signature cop yell. Get the fuck on the ground! And look at his mama, bro. She is devastated. God, my nigga, why? Making your mama cry like this is criminal. So Hero has no choice but to just throw all of them off of him and just run for his life. And just like that, this man's life is over. Bro is the most wanted man in Japan. News media outlets got him listed everywhere. So while this man is on the run, he ends up meeting the most important character in this entire case, his accomplice. Shion. Now, the reason why she's the most important character is something that we'll learn later. But right now, just know that she is sheltering Hero, which is illegal as fuck. And the reason why she's sheltering Hero? You probably guessed it. She's deeply in love with this motherfucker. Now, with all of our people of interest explained, now it's time to focus on the first catastrophe, the media massacre. So late one night, Hero's watching the news and he sees his mother being bombarded by media and just being harassed online. Like Twitter is cooking her shit right now. It got so bad. Discord mods was on some SS Snipe Wolf timing. They doxed her. And this all ended up leading up to his mother offing herself. <laughs> This right here was the beginning of the crash out. So the next day, Hero's dad is getting bombarded by the media. So this man Hero pulls up to his dad's house and just let it rip. Bro just started murdering everybody right in front of his dad. And look at this man, now he got a whole class set up. Bro got a primary weapon now. And he just kept on spraying and praying until nobody else was breathing. And that easily, this man just offed a total of 17 people in 30 seconds. And this man's dad is shook. He is like, oh, Lord, son, please don't shoot me, son, please. And this man hero just coldly looks at him and flies off to his next victim. 
So after this man boomed 17 news reporters, next up were the Discord mods. Now, as we know, a main reason why his mom offed herself is because she got straight doxxed and harassed. And after she offed herself, they were still talking shit. Yeah, stupid bitch. Hope she fucking rots. <laughs> Whore bag. Fuck your son and fuck your mother. So Hero ends up finding the IP of the dude who doxxed his mom. So Hero ended up joining their Discord server and just started chatting. Bro said, I'm going to kill you all. So obviously the Discord mods think he bullshitting because they're making fun of him because they probably think he's off a perk. But then it got to the point where Hero sent this message that said, I wish you would try and come and eliminate me, <laughs> fucker. <laughs> What's good, fuck, nigga? Hold on, let me get on the monitor real quick. Make sure you see me in HD, nigga. <laughs> this gotta be a joke or something, right? <laughs> this is preposterous. So you're the dude who docks my mom, right? Uh, no, I didn't. Only when I dox you. Oh, uh, really? <laughs> You know what happens next, right? And what are you gonna do? Leak my lollicon hentai folder? <laughs> oh. <laughs> Holy skadoodle, I was just trolling. Dance, fat boy. I want you to look good on camera. Lord Jesus, fuck, help fuck, me! Fuck, 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 fuck. <laughs> Eat my booty crack, mother trucker. <laughs> So after this man murdered Lollicon 445, he sent the video to every single person in the server and just started offing every single one of them. It didn't matter where you was at, he found you. Nigga at the library, dead, crossing the road, at school, at a meeting, on the subway. Every single one of these niggas got boomed. And look at the last dude praying for his life. Please, please, I didn't mean to talk shit, man. Oh. And just like that, all 12 of the Discord mods that were talking shit about this man's mom were all found and murdered within the hour. Y'all righty, ladies and gentlemen, it is time for the grand finale, the final case, the NPA massacre and the Shinjuku incident. Now, remember when I told you that Shion is the most important character in this entire case and will be the glue to everything? See, here's the thing. She basically plays the role of, I can fix him. And to be fair, she did. This nigga grew a soft spot for her, even though nights before he contemplated on killing her and her grandma. Look, nigga got the gun to her forehead about to blow her brains out. But she ended up convincing this man to start saving people. So this man started actually saving people's lives. He was curing cancer patients, paralyzed people, and just overall doing good deeds. It was a miracle. So this man was in hiding for a good two months, living with the only light he had in life, his sunshine. But what happens when you take that light away? Well, ask the police department. Target is in the main house. Have Bravo 6, going dark. So SEAL Team 6 bust in the house and just shoot to kill. The grandma got unloaded on, Shorty got dropped off, and they just started dumping mags in Hero. Apparently bro did not escape that five star wanted level. So bro has to blow a hole in the house to make his escape and just squad wipe the whole SWAT team. So after this, you just see this man just tearing up, just devastated. Now they're not dead because of his healing factors and shit, but this all led up to and I mean this literally, the biggest crash out in anime history. So now it's time to focus our sights on the NPA. So later that night, Hero shows up to the police department with a hood over his head, looks at the security guard guarding the front door and just booms him in the head. And you just hear shots and screams from the outside as this man is just mauling his way through the hallways, doing his best Anakin Skywalker impersonation. Like you cannot tell me this nigga does not look like Anakin when he slaughtered the younglings. And for right now, I don't even want you to focus on the kill count this entire segment because we're actually gonna get a precise number at the end of this. So now we focus on these two agents as they find Hero just standing here menacingly. And bro right here wasn't playing no games. He straight up said, suck my dick nigga. So he booms Hero in the the head and a bunch of other dudes pop out of cover and just start booming them. So after they dump all the ammo in them, they like, ugh, sir, I think we got him. Boom! 
Hurrah, motherfucker! But sadly, them boys were shooting BB guns. So this man here on face playing dead gets a triple kill straight headshots. And the one agent runs at him to try to tackle him. But bro got Derrick Henry stiff arm and just put the gun to his head and said, gun to the front of your head and ain't five One Piece characters, non-straw hats. <laughs> Wrong! So after he just annihilated everybody in here, the last dude asks, what do you want and why are you doing this? And Hero tells him, well, you were gonna come after me anyways, right? So I decided to save you the trip and shoots him in the leg. So this man leaves him alive and says, I want you to witness me wipe out the entire police force in a night. So after this, bro walks outside and the whole SWAT team is here to greet him. Mans is surrounded. So bro starts walking out and the snipers already got his ass in sight. So one of them takes a shot and sends them flying and the whole team moves in and just starts shooting. But it was not going to be that easy. These niggas was going against the Decepticon. So they finally pin him down and surround them. And this finally looks like the end of Hero. But alas, bro reveals his trump card. And but online. So this man takes flight and just starts spamming lasers. Everybody just starts getting hit. There was no running, there was no hiding. That aimbot started tracking. Nigga, this shit was worse than that phase Jarvis aimbot. And every single cop, detective, and SWAT team member got annihilated. And then bro's body just fell down on the card. So the last two detectives that somehow survived just started shooting bro, making him look crazy in this frame, looking like he getting head from Tiana Trump. And after they run out of ammo, bro just looks at him and just gets the easiest double, double kill, kill of his life. And of course, the last man standing is old boy he shot in the leg. And Hero just looks at him and says, told you nigga, and just walks away, leaving him there. And with that, this man killed a total of a whopping 85 people that night. And on the news, it goes more into detail. Just alone, 34 of his kills was just a SWAT team. So that means 51 of them niggas was boomed in the police station alone. And with that, bro just wiped out the entire police force. But was he done? No. Because now it's time for this man's final act, the Shinjuku incident. So the literal next morning, this man hacks into all of the TVs and basically announces and says, Greetings, citizens of Japan. As of now, I will be declaring war on your country. And why is that, you may ask? Simple, because me and my shorty cannot live in peace with all of you heathens. And right before this man gets off of the intercom, he states, and remember, no Russian. Now, if you know what that term means, and you know who this is, then you know what's coming next. So obviously the citizens think nothing of it. They probably think this is a prank until this happens. Bodies start dropping. So panic just ensues. Nobody knows what the f is going on. Bodies are getting dropped left and right. So then you see these dudes in the alley and they obviously calling for help until the dude gets boomed through his phone. And that's when they end up figuring out Hero is shooting them through their phone. So then he ended up calling the news anchor. So he was like, ladies and gentlemen, breaking news. I have Hero Shishigami on the phone right now. Now, sir, you've done a very terrible thing. Is there anything that you want to say to the public about the atrocities you committed? Shut up, nigga. <laughs> Bro shot this man on national TV. So Hero's best friend ends up sending a telecom message to everybody to put your phone down. So everybody ends up dropping their phone. But this man Hero got on the big screen and said, dropping your phones won't save you. Now, let the party continue. And Bro just starts unloading on everybody through the TV screens. This shit just got ridiculous. And Bro just kept on unloading. He didn't stop until he got to 100. So the next day, this man does the unthinkable. Bro lifts his hands up and everybody just starts looking in the air, just speechless. And then you see it, a big ass plane comes down and crashes. This nigga dropping planes. Oh, hell no! Bro used his hacking ability to basically EMP bomb the plane. And this wasn't the only one. This nigga dropped six of these bitches crashing in the middle of the city. This shit is just absurd at this point. But oh boy, now we gotta do some big math. I ain't no damn mathematician, but look, there gotta be at least 300 bodies on each plane. Times that hoe by six. This nigga just dropped off 1,800 bodies. You could easily round this bitch to 2,000 with the collateral damage like dog and it wasn't that six just dropped anything in the airspace dropped 
but luckily the main character came in and saved the day because this could have got 10 times worse than it already was. So after all this chaos, Hiro ends up confronting Mr. Inuyashiki and states, why are you helping these people? You're just like me. So what the fuck are you doing? And Mr. Inuyashiki says, because I'm a hero, young blood. Now, what does that say about you, youngin? And Hiro starts crying and realizes, damn, looks like I'm the villain after all. So then he slaps this nigga in the chin, busting open his cranium, and just starts shooting him. So Inuyashiki has to take off because his daughter was in one of the buildings that got hit. But Hiro was just chasing this man throughout the entire city. So the only way to stop this man was to, I kid you not, drop a satellite on this nigga so that's what he did he dropped the satellite on the nigga then ripped open his cranium ripped off his arms and just dropped him into an alley to make sure bro couldn't do no more shit and that concludes the end of this man's atrocities and with a whopping kill count of around an estimated 2035 bodies and let's be real it could be more hero shishigami submitted himself as one of anime's deadliest serial killers now get this after this man got his ass whooped he was basically cooked bro couldn't do shit no more he had no hands so this man goes back to his best friend's house looking like a doomer and just tells him yo you read that new one piece yet her Oda was cooking this week. So bro read his last chapter of One Piece with the toes out, went to go see Shorty for one more time, reflected on his life choices, and blew himself up on an asteroid to save the world. Yeah, I know you're probably confused on the ending, but hey, I actually recommend go watching this anime. It's actually good as hell, but uh, this nigga out here really trying to have redeeming qualities. Nah, fuck that nigga. You killed a fucking baby. <laughs> And with that, ladies and gentlemen, case closed. And that is our first installment of anime's deadliest serial killers. But anyways, man, hope y'all enjoyed. And before I forget, the hiatus hiatus is over on the second channel. So I'll finally be over there in between vids now. But until then, I'm out this hoe.